I am very, very afraid of my July TBR. Let me tell you about it. First of all, I'd like to apologize for my shiny, shiny face. I cannot get the lighting right unless it is daylight and I'm using my laptop for notes. So I'm just glowing today. Let's just interpret it as like a healthy glow as opposed to a sweaty sheen, okay? That's all the gray on that one. So I'm not usually one for lists. I've never really made a TBR on this channel, I don't think. And it's because well, the whole concept of this channel is that I used to be obsessed with reading, but only really for academic validation. And we're trying to get away from that. So I actively was like, no TBRs, no lists, no aims. Um, but I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to make myself a list without it becoming an addiction. Uh, to achievement. I am currently reading Ernest Hemingway's A Movable Feast on the iPad and it is not going well. I think like I can see I get it, you know, I get it. He's great, but it's just killing my vibe to be honest. It's really ground down my reading rate and made me not want to pick up the book and that's really bad like that's when you know you're really not gelling with a book so uh it's not that long but i'm only kind of 30 percent of the way through if i do not finish that by july it's currently june 28th there will be problems but i'm hoping that is not on the july tbr because i don't know i feel i feel like it's symbolic like if it leaks into another month all hope is lost. So without further ado, a few of the books are pretty pretty hefty as you'll find out and that's why I described this list as kind of scary. I actually did, apart from the end, have a really good month last month. I read The Bell Jar, I read Olga Dies Dreaming and The Idiot and Convenience Store Woman, which I think is a really good month because it's like so much variety. It was this mixture of kind of classics, ones that everyone raves about and ones I hadn't necessarily heard about, um, more contemporary ones, different points of view, different styles. It was a really good time and this month we're taking a bit of a turn, starting off with Crime and Punishment. See? I, do I told you it was a scary month. So this book is part of my Big Scary Book Club series. I'll be making like a vlog and discussion video on this book. Um, I think it goes without saying that this is an intimidating book if you haven't read it. Everyone, whenever I mention it, everyone in the comments is like, that's an amazing book. I can't wait for you to read it. Um, so that has given me a little bit of confidence, but nonetheless, I've never read any Russian literature and I just think the title of this book is so scary. Like, could you make a more intimidating title? Um, and I've also heard that Russian books, the same people have multiple names, um, so it can be quite hard to keep track of. And then obviously names that are like unfamiliar to you uh, are harder to keep track of. Um, but that's just the fault of my tiny pea brain. I don't deserve any sympathy for that. Um, oh, by the way, it's, that's my running vest. Don't know if you noticed, but I have a running vest because I run, ran a half marathon for the first time the other week. No big deal. Anyway, in terms of what this is actually about, um, as you can assume, uh, it looks like it's about the big moral questions. It follows a slightly lost guy post uni. He's just graduated, just graduated. He's a former student is how the blurb describes him. And he kills someone uh, and the book kind of goes from there and he believes it was a kind of righteous murder. I think it really grapples with those questions of like ethics and is there such thing as righteous murder while also telling a very interesting story and by the looks of it there are also some pretty excellent prose in there um and yeah as i said people seem to absolutely love this book so i'm scared but i am looking forward to it next on the list just following on uh with the law theme apparently I am reading Prima Facci, which is an incredible play with Jodie Comer and I believe it's, she's the only person in it, so she basically has a monologue. Uh, my dad has seen it and the play is about a barrister who is an incredible defence lawyer for 
uh, perpetrators or people who've been accused of sexual assault and basically she's very good at defending these people until she herself experiences one of these crimes and so I think it's meant to be incredibly interesting obviously I wish I was seeing the play but I like who can afford to see plays these days uh, but no, I think there are actually some affordable tickets available, but they're just like really hard to get and I didn't manage to get a ticket and now I don't think it's in London anymore. So we're sad about that. But as you can see, it's a pretty skinny read, uh, which is why I'm quite optimistic about the length of my overall um, July TBR. Uh, but I am really, really excited for it. For a book so skinny, I feel like it's gonna really blow my mind and make me feel things. And it is incredibly highly rated online. So, but I, I actually don't see people talking about this much. I don't know whether it's because it's a play, um, so you don't see it on BookTok or BookTube. Am I breaking the rules by talking about this? Because it's a play script, does this count? Anyway, next up we have Time is a Mother, which again is a little bit of an unconventional thing to have on a TBR because it's a poetry book, um, but I think it qualifies. I think, I think that's allowed. So Time is a Mother is by Ocean Vong and it's basically an anthology. It's meant to be incredibly emotive, incredibly personal, and the author is basically just searching for life and the meaning of life and kind of joy after the death of his mother. I read Crying in H Mart, which was about a, it was actually a memoir um, that talked about the death of the author and kind of went into intimate detail of the grief and the dying process. And I'm trying to get in, so I experienced intense grief at the age of 18 and we're now many, many years on from that, but I feel like I never gelled with like classic self-help books around grief. So I'm trying to just drip feed myself a few pieces of literature about grief like even if they are um non-fiction i feel like i get a lot more comfort and learn a lot more from reading about other people's experience and i find it more enjoyable um than if i were to read like an actual grief self-help book so this is a bit of a this is a special little grief book and i feel like maybe once a month i'll have a little grief related book but we'll see like it might it might get too much i might have to reduce the rate but this is my grief book of the month uh that i'm looking forward to reading even though uh it'll probably destroy me but uh everyone says it's brilliant and let me read actually because it's, it's like quite interesting how it's described this book talks about how it embodies the paradox of sitting within grief while being determined to survive beyond it um and i think to me that sorry windows are open because it's hot hence the sweat slash healthy glow so that was a really inappropriate aside so this book talks about sitting with grief but also surviving beyond it and i think that is the hardest balance to crack with grief i think uh if you're grieving that's one of the things that you just struggle with forever you're forever trying to um like feel your feelings but also grief is such a big feeling and such a crushing feeling sometimes that feeling it too much means you can't function. Like you need a little bit of suppression, basically. Um, so I think I really look forward to hearing about that angle. Okay, oh, okay, I've read about, told you about these books. So next we have a book that I'm excited for, but I am currently feuding with a small secondhand bookstore, which I never, wished would happen <laughs> no i am joking but i did need to get a refund because the second hand book i ordered didn't deliver and at the end of the like customer service interaction they were like okay we've sent you a refund i'm really sorry it never arrived and i wanted to reply like no i'm really sorry but i thought that might come off as passive aggressive anyway all in all i might have to get this through some other means which is annoying um but the book is The Crying of Lot 49, and it's a bit of a swerve from the ones that are currently on my list, but this is the, the wild card on the TBR. I truly have no idea what it'll be like. It's like 3.69 stars on Goodreads, which I feel is just, like, who knows? I feel like so many books are that rating, um, and yeah, but it sounds curious. It sounds chaotic, actually, and energetic. 
Um, the whole premise is Oedipa. Oedipa. I think I've said that name like too many times in my head and now I've, I'm second guessing myself. Oedipa Mass discovers she has been made, like by surprise, she has been made executrix of a former lover's will. It's meant to be like funny and humorous, uh, but it's also meant to be full of like drugs and sex and madness. So, oh, and also marriage. Sorry, I didn't realize that was in the description. And I just don't know, like that single sentence already implies so much curiousness and weird stuff. And yeah, hopefully it'll revive me uh, once I've finished <laughs> this Hemingway book. Finally, and I am really excited about this book because this is one that has been recommended so many times. Um, I've been seeing it everywhere and I just never got around to it. Um, but it's very highly praised and it is called Educated by Tara Westover. I believe it is meant to be about someone who leaves a cult. And wait, has it? It's just hit me. It's a memoir. It's a memoir. Oh. You know when you hear about books and they sound incredible and that means your brain, like I forgot it was a memoir because it was sounded so wild. Tara Westover was 17 the first time she set foot in a classroom, born to survivalists in the mountains of Idaho. She prepared for the end of the world by stockpiling home canned peaches and sleeping with her head for the hills bag. Her father forbade hospitals, so she never saw a doctor or nurse. So it's her experience of lacking a formal education, educating herself. <clears throat> I think it is meant to be, and I kind of hate this word because I feel like it like is a little bit dehumanizing, but it is meant to be an incredibly inspiring, impressive tale of how she kind of educated herself. And I think she ends up at Harvard and then Cambridge. It sounds really intense um, because obviously it's about her journey of like leaving this incredibly remote cut off from society group and having to kind of sever family ties also having to discover herself as an independent person outside of this group i just can't imagine um what that would be like <laughs> so i'm reading about it to try and help myself do that i know so little about this topic as well i'm not really like a I feel like you see the odd thing on social media, but I'm not someone who's read up loads on these types of stories or seen many documentaries on these types of stories. So um, I think this book, it looks like it's incredible for any reader, but I think it will be in very, very enlightening uh, for me. So yeah, we have another memoir. Um, I'm getting so into memoirs. Sorry, I'm, I haven't done the outro yet. Anyway, I really look forward to getting through these books and I think we've got a really good range. I started off with this video saying that I was scary of my, scary, that I was scared of my TBR, but on reflection, uh, I'm also so excited for it that I'm, I'm no longer afraid. And you know what? If we don't read all of the books, that's okay. You are doing this for enjoyment not for grades. <laughs> um, I'm like half joking. I hope you have a lovely rest of the week. And if you've read any of these books, I think I've got a few that are a little bit, a little bit underrated. Not underrated, I don't know. I'm looking at this one really. I feel like I hear nothing about it. Anyway, 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 gotta go. I was about to say thanks for having me. I guess thanks for watching me. Thanks for allowing me into your eardrums. That was creepy. I'm sorry.